This is an extraordinary day in conservation history. One few thought would ever happen. Look at that Madagascar potch is flying on Lake Sophia. Oh, Against all expectations, a duck once thought extinct oh, one out there, look. That, is yeah, being good, released so into nice. the wild on a remote lake in Madagascar. This is a story of sheer grit and determination, of conservationists whose pioneering action in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds overcame extraordinary challenges to bring the world's rarest duck, the Madagascar pochard, back from the brink. Yeah, good work. But what makes their achievement so special is that it's not just the future of the duck that's now looking rosier. They've also helped secure the future of the lake and its wildlife, and a sustainable future for the thousands of people who rely on these wetlands for their survival. In the beginning, people were sad because they thought that the lake had been sold to foreigners. But now they're convinced that the project's purpose is to help wildlife and people by protecting and managing natural resources. Our story begins in 2006 with a remarkable discovery. After being thought extinct for 15 years, a small number of Madagascar pochards are found clinging to life on a remote lake in Madagascar. But with the lake probably being too deep for ducklings to find enough food, the question was how much longer would they survive? Not just on this lake, but as a species. Drastic action needed to be taken. We decided that the population numbering around about 25 individuals with only six of those being females really wasn't safe at all. So we took the brave decision to bring some birds into captivity to safeguard it from extinction. The eggs were actually beginning to pip. We got there in the nick of time. Hours later, the, those chicks could have hatched and been off on the lake and um, uncollectible. That night, the ducklings hatch by the lake. That was a little miracle. But time is of the essence. For them to be kept alive, the ducklings need to be moved to safety immediately. So the following morning, they're driven a gruelling ten hours along little more than dirt tracks to An Shwihi, where a duckery is hastily built in a hotel room. We raised the, the ducklings in a hotel, starting in a bathroom, and then in the, the hotel grounds we built an aviary so the birds could be outside in the sunlight. We had to build the captive population from its 24 founders to about 100 individuals just to be sure that we knew that we had a, a good nucleus of, of birds in a safe environment from which we could take birds for release. While the breeding programme went from strength to strength, the search began for a suitable site where the birds could be safely released into the wild. But Madagascar's wetlands have been severely degraded and finding a new home for the ducks was easier said than done. People's general perception of, of Madagascar from fantastic wildlife programs is this rich, biodiverse area. And that's true nowadays really of only small pockets. As you drive across Madagascar, large parts of the landscape have been affected, large parts deforested. If anything, the situation is even worse for wetlands. Over the next few years, the team explored 30 possible lakes. Finally, they decided on Lake Sophia. But it wasn't ideal, and it was clear that if the ducks were to stand any chance of flourishing in their new home, 
the lake environment needed to be improved. The challenge of putting a, a species back into the wild in Madagascar, and particularly on a, on a lake you know that is not in good condition, is huge. Here we know the people rely on this lake. It's central to the lives of 12,000, maybe even more people. So we did a lot of work understanding their needs. Uh, and with them, the first thing we do was empower the community, make them the managers of the natural resources around the lake, because it has to be for them and about them. Paulette has been working on the project since 2015. My job is to collaborate with the local community to help set up a pilot farming scheme. I tell farmers about the importance of protecting and managing Lake Sofia's natural resources and show them the benefits of different management techniques. Paulette's encouraging farmers to adopt more sustainable farming practices that use less pesticides and give greater yields. I grow rice, beans, nuts and vegetables using the new techniques. Now we produce up to 100 containers of rice without pesticides. Previously it was only 50 to 60 containers. The production is flourishing. As the environment around Lake Sophia starts to improve, the time has come to move the ducks. But before they can reach their new home, they face a perilous 14-hour journey over some of the most treacherous and unforgiving terrain. This, this, is, this is trying to get ducks across rural Madagascar. This is chaos. This is the most chaos I have ever seen on a road. There are, there are there's a queue of trucks. They have allowed us to jump it, but now we are in here and we are stuck. We have sent the Land Rover first, and it's, it's just hit a wall of mud. And it's still five five or more hours drive away, and the road looked good, and they've said. It's chaos here, and it's also chaos. There's another river crossing ahead that's also chaos. So uh, I only hope it's less chaos than this one. Despite the challenges of the journey, the ducks remain remarkably unperturbed. Uh, ducklings are doing really well. They've slept most of the way since they had their little swim and food. So we're happy with them. Just want to get them now into the lake and into their new home. Finally, after 14 hours on the road, the team arrives at Lake Sophia. Over the next month, the team will make the journey three more times and bring 21 ducks to their lakeside aviary, where they'll need to be cared for round the clock. When everybody went to bed, when my night person duties began, I put about four o'clock in the morning, was woken up by the sound they were making. They were actually running around eating midges, and they must have eaten about 100 midges each, each I reckon, um, which is great behaviour and, you know, pleasing. It looked like, you know, maybe they've turned the corner. Over the next two months, the birds become healthy fledglings. But the challenge is now how to prepare them for their safe release onto the lake. The big risk is when you put any, any bird back into, any animal back into its habitat to reintroduce it, is it doesn't stay at the site. The problem for Madagascar Pochet is there is no other site where it will survive. It has to stay here. There's even not enough food for it, but at least we will provide food. If they go elsewhere, they are, they are doomed. To increase the chances of the birds remaining on Lake Sophia, the team creates the world's first floating aviaries 
so the birds can become familiar with their new home before their release. Nine years after the first eggs were taken into captivity, it's now time for the Madagascar pochard to be returned to the wild. And the excitement among the team is palpable. Wow, this is uh, exciting. What's going to happen next? I really don't know. This uh, in a group on the threshold of the float and Avery, watching the other ducks and then suddenly just jumped, popped in the water, and swam towards them, swam round probably about 200 metres. Oh, he's, he, the others are out, the others are out, the others are out. The fledglings have just come out. It's an emotional moment. There might only be 21 birds released today, but it's a crucial point in the bird's journey back from the brink of extinction and a testament to the dedication and ingenuity of this small team of conservationists. For those involved, it's the culmination of more than 10 years of pioneering conservation work. We're delighted with what's occurred at the end of the day. Our birds are integrating with wild ducks. Within two days of releasing the birds, we've got a duck community. We've got those that upend, we've got those that feed on the surface and we've got now birds that dive for a living. So um, we're starting to restore Lake Sophia and its bird fauna to perhaps um, what it sh should have been a hundred years ago. And as the Madagascar pochard continues to flourish, far from being the end of our story, it's just the beginning of the tale of a duck that becomes the catalyst inspiring a community to come together with conservationists to restore a lake. So I've come here with others to save the world's rarest bird that happens to be a duck. In doing that, I've discovered that there's more to conservation than bringing them back alive, but to work with, with people. And the people of Madagascar have really surprised me in not just how they've welcomed us and shared their, their lives with us, but they're also wanting to change the, the, the way things are done here to improve things for themselves, but also for, for wildlife, including those threatened birds and the duck that we're working on. And now, as guardians of the lake, and by restoring it to one rich in wildlife, the people are not only securing a rosier future for the world's rarest duck, they're also building a more secure and prosperous future for themselves and for many generations to come. And for the conservationists at WWT, the hope is that the Madagascar pochard will inspire everyone at home and around the world to protect and restore wetlands for people and wildlife. A challenge we can only meet with your support. <laughs>